All right, we're at EFI Express in, uh, well, near Epping, New Hampshire. I'm just doing a quick scan after earlier's misfire issues, but uh, Mark here is gonna do a, um, a UM update. Last time I was here was June of 2016, according to Foursquare. So it's overdue for an update. There's probably been three or four since then. Nothing too critical, I think. Uh, the last time I was here was a um, Fred at UM recommended I come out because it was a um, recommended that I come in. They reduced the boost Max boost PSI from 28 or 27 and a half pounds to about 25 and a half. Uh, so I definitely had a drop in power, but you know, it's uh, they said it was safer for the car. So I don't know if they're gonna be adding more boost back or if uh, there's something else they're gonna be doing. But anyway, in, in UM I trust, so we'll just see how it do goes. I did, a, I did pull engine fault codes, not the auto scan, but engine fault codes and didn't find anything. So that's good. So far, well, can't see, but so far nothing that's come up, at least engine related. I gotta figure out what this thing does, it fell down. So we just did the UM config, uh, flash for the new software. Uh, we set the boost to, the boost to um, 28, the stock was 29. Uh, we set it to 28 PSI, because um, I think, Old stage two high torque was uh, 28.5. Then I got an update from Fred and it was to 25. Uh, the new default was 29, so we set it to 28. We set the Octane 93, which is my default for Shell. And then we um, set the uh, boost at launch to half, half of max. So now I'm just gonna drop it here and just uh, do a quick launch, nothing crazy. Obviously make sure no one's, no one's there, but I'll, I'll, I'll later add a little timer to this. As I usually do. Okay, we're in sport traction control, so the TCS is still on, just not in uh, full full mode. We're in uh, sport DSG, so we'll monitor boost and RPM all the way to the floor. All right, that was our test. All the way to the floor. Porter's making an appearance as usual. Hey, Porter. Uh, hello, everyone. It's Adam here. <clears throat> uh, this is going to be an update video to uh, my Golf R is Broken video that I posted last week. So, and once again, I'm saying we're in the same clothes as the previous video because i um, doing all these in a batch. <laughs> sorry about that. To those of you that watch every video religiously, I thank you very much, but um, I'm sorry that I'm not changing shirts between takes. It would be pretty clear that I was changing shirts between takes. Um, okay, so uh, I experienced my first limp mode. So I'm going to do a quick catch up for those of you that don't watch every video and then we'll go into the issue. Um, but the TLDR is it, of it is it is a bug with the United Motorsports software. As far as I know, I've got no reason to think otherwise. Um, so let's backtrack and, uh, and I'll mention that if you're running the new uh, U, the UM file as of today, July 27th, uh, that um, allows you to customize the octane and, and launch boost and, uh, and, and, and maximum boost, turbocharger boost, um, and you're concerned about experiencing lit mode, uh, please go back to your UM dealer and revert back to the old file until this bug is fixed. So that's the TLDR of it. Uh, okay, so uh, last week on Wednesday, this is Wednesday the 19th, I took my, uh, my Stage 2 Golf R that was running the previously newest file. I went to EFI Motorsport in uh, Lee, New Hampshire um, and got the latest United Motorsport file that was just released a few weeks ago and this allows you to set uh, octane level uh, boost in the boost at launch. Uh, there's a piece of Windows 10 software you can also get from UM, but in order to use that software, you need to have one of their cables. 
uh, which is very similar to the Unitronic Uniconnect cable, where they're going to sell you this cable. I, I assume it'll be 100 bucks or 150. It'll allow you to modify um, these parameters at home, but it'll also allow you to update update your cars to the latest files as they come out. Um, at home, at home flashing basically, so which is nice for me because I'm two hours from the nearest uh, dealer, so it's great for me. I'm happy to buy the cable when it's available, uh, but I just wanted to make sure I had all the latest updates. Uh, so I went there and I had the guys at EFI check out a couple other things in the car. I went to the Epping drag strip. I did three um, quarter mile runs, no issue. Times were slow because of the ambient temps. It wasn't slow because of the tune. In fact, I was running three to four pounds of boost more than I was um, prior. And my, my timing was set at 91 octane, and they changed it to 93 octane, so I would assume that my time would have been better if it was a little bit cooler outside. All right, so fast forward to 6.30. In my car, I'm heading home. I'm in cruise control. I usually cruise control between 70 and 73, depending on the area. I don't have DAP with my Golf R, so I have to constantly turn it on and off. There was at one point, though, where I was about 21, 22 miles from the house on Interstate 89, which is a northern New Hampshire, Vermont area, and... Um, I was in cruise control probably for 20 miles without having to do any interruptions. I, could, I, I turned the the, uh, the speed up and down. I never had to dis and disengage cruise control. Uh, and then suddenly, and I'll try to put all this in here, uh, maybe it's a clip or maybe it's a thing here. Uh, I had um, uh, the EPC light came on in my car. So I saw in the, in the center console a little square screen, uh, the cruise control logo went, was orange. Down below it was orange instead of green. I tried to re-engage it. It wouldn't re-engage. It kept popping up the same orange logo thing. Um, I gave the car gas, and it was as if I was I was running without a turbo. Basically, I was giving it gas. The engine was responding. The RPMs were responding, but I wasn't. I, there was no boost at all. The turbo was completely off, which of course is a safety issue. If there's an issue with the turbo, there's no point in keeping to try to to work through it. Uh, luckily, I was about 250, 300 yards in the next exit, so I uh, indicated got off the interstate. Bug, sorry. Uh, make sure you guys are he wearing headphones are still awake. Uh, got the interstate. Um, I had a check engine light and EPC light were solid. I turned the car off. Um, I did not start it back up. I just turned the car back on. The ignition, I'll have my brake uh, depressed. Plugged in my VATCOM cable and my MacBook Pro. Launched VCDS um, and cleared the codes. And the code was one fault found, engine zero one. Um, 30705 actuator module for turbocharger 1 P00AF00 uh, bracket 101 stuck. Um, freeze frame was, uh, it was 718, oh, 718, oh, not 19. Uh, 8 15 p.m. Uh, engine speed was 2600 uh, RPM. The, the load value was 24.7 percent. I was going 110 kilometers an hour. Um, Coolant temp was 98 Celsius, intake air was 29 Celsius, ambient air pressure 970 millibars. Um, change air pressure control valve uh, unconditional voltage. Oh, so, change air pressure control valve position target value is 0.00%. The air pressure control volume actual value was 2.86%. Um, so, it, 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 it basically said, okay, this is not, not expected, let's kill it. Uh, I cleared the code. I got back in the car, uh, rode it normally for a few minutes, did some, did some, you know, full boost, uh, you know, speed up to 90 miles an hour, got to 60 again, just kind of did a few pulls, no problems occurred, um, put it back in cruise control at 73 miles an hour, got home safe without incident, when I got off the interstate I did one more really hard pull up the hill uh, to where my house, towards where my house is, um, full boost, 0 to 75 miles an hour, no issue, performed second to the great drag strip. So, uh, I emailed Fred at UM. Uh, I Fred, I dropped. Well, I'm gonna catch up on this. Catch up what happened here. I lost boost pressure and throttle was weak. Solid Macy turbo wasn't working. I got off the next exit and ran the faults. After clearing codes, I drove home. Yada yada yada. Nothing went wrong. Do you and Jeff have any insight on what went wrong? This is the first limp mode I've ever seen on this car. So for the record, I've had check engine lights before, but never have I had a limp mode on the car or an EPC light on the car. Um, I also forwarded EFI Express. He said he haven't heard of, of any actuators failing, but he was pretty sure it's a replaceable part, so that's nice. Uh, I, I saw a lot of MK6 or 5 or 4s with uh, where you can order actuators online, so I didn't see any for 7. I actually went to Volkswagen and asked them what the part cost for an actuator for my turbo, the IS38 turbo would be, 
and they printed off a sheet and they circled the diverter, the DV. Uh, so that's incorrect. They gave me a price, which is basically the price of a DV. So it's not the DV, I don't think. Um, okay, so Fred replied back a day later. Adam, being in cruise for a long time is causing this. I'll look into the trigger. I got back to him yesterday and I said, sorry to bother you. You can let me know when these changes are made to the file so I can visit EFI and grab an update. I do a lot of long cruises in Vermont and I don't want to always have my laptop with me. So he replied back yesterday saying, I'm not sure as of now the ET on the update, but you can go back to the non-adjustable file for now if you'd like. This file does not have this issue. So I'm guessing, and I haven't seen anything on any forums about this, but I'm guessing this is the, I'm the only person that's had this issue, not, not the only person that's had this issue, if Fred's aware of the cruise control let mode problem. Um, so for now, if you're running the new file and you as a daily driver, go back to the old one. Unless you keep a VATCOM cable with you, you don't mind clearing codes. I don't know if these issues are causing um, permanent damage to the turbocharger, uh, but for now my car is um, on the driveway, I'm not touching it, and then when I have time, I'm going to go down to EFI and get the and roll back the file, and then um, you know, hopefully that fixes this issue. Unfortunately, it's like a two hour drive to get down there. But um, yeah, something that wasn't really foreseen by me. I've had issues with uh, UN tunes before. Uh, this one's not that bad. So uh, I guess this is more of an update for those of you wondering if something was seriously wrong. Something is seriously wrong, but it's software based. Uh, the car is running normally otherwise. Just keep it out of the cruise control, I guess, and just kind of don't stay in a certain speed for 25 miles. Um, but if you are UM tuned and you have the latest file, roll it back. If you don't have the latest file, hold off. And uh, it's almost as if I'm going to wait until the UM cable comes out for me to actually buy the get up get the file. Um, because with the UM cable, I can revert back between different loads, and I can also change parameters. And I think that's going to be a, a more efficient use of my time rather than constantly going down to Lee, New Hampshire, uh, every few months and checking for the most recent file. So that's all I got. That's the update on the limp mode issues that I have. Um, there are still other issues that we're working out. Uh, a lot more um, will come of that next week when I finally get into the downpipe and all those other things. But for now, limp mode is resolved, I guess. But um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Porter is going to say goodbye. Say bye, Porter. He's doing his pacifier thing on the toy. All right, buddy. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching.